Good morning, everybody. I am Jeff Blankenberg, and here we are on a lovely Wednesday, March 3rd. Uh, and as we do every day, we're here to talk about technology and building stuff. And uh, we'll certainly be building some more stuff for our trivia game today. Um, last night, I had a little bit of free time, and I sat around and added just about 100 new questions to the database. So we're officially well beyond 500 questions now in our database. I expect before we launch, I'll have us up closer to 1,000. Uh, 1,000 questions is a good substantial number, I think. Um, and my plan is that's just 50 questions per category. But that's that's a decent number of questions to start with. And then we can continue to add and grow from there. So that is, uh, that's what's going on on the back side of this, is we have a bunch of new questions and, and things that we've added. Um, I've also made, uh, I guess, a kind of an executive decision that I'm going to at least pause on the idea of using Brian's voice. Um, there's a couple of reasons for this. It's not just that I'm fighting with some technical difficulties in getting his voice to replace all the other voice stuff that we have in there. But um, on top of that, he doesn't he doesn't do things like speech cons very well. He doesn't do emotion very Mom! well. Mom! Oh, good morning, Mom. Um, he doesn't do uh, a lot of the uh special sounds that we can get alexa to make um and some examples of that are like i said speech cons um there's a lot of emotion and emphasis that we can have alexa's voice put on things that we can't do with brian so i think for at least for the time being i've paused on using brian as our host's voice and we'll just live with alexa for now um but we we just have a couple small steps i think that we need to take in order to get all of this where it needs to be we are now capable of letting the user ask for any of the 20 categories and we prompt them to purchase it if they would like to purchase it or they can just give me a random question or give me a question and it'll randomly pick one for them. Um, and that's fine. They don't have to pay for any of that. There's also a subscription which allows them to subscribe to the skill and unlock all of the categories for a small monthly charge. Uh, and then there's a daily game. Um, and it's not it's not really a daily Why? game yet. Are you following me? Thriller Geek, thank you for the follow. Good to see you, man. Um, so that's our other option is um, we currently have the ability for a user to say anytime, I want to play a game, and it will start a brand new 10-question quiz for them. But it's based on all the questions that are already in the database. So eventually, phase two uh, of this, maybe V1.1, is the idea that we would offer a daily, a new daily game. Same format, same everything, with two specific catches. The first one is that the game would be daily, which means you only get to play it once, and you have to play it on the day that it's available. Two, um, it's 10 questions across 10 different categories, and if you get any one of those 10 questions wrong, you're done. So there's a lot of value and benefit in being able to get to that ninth or 10th question. There should be some reward for it. And so we'll have to figure out what those things are uh, so that we can do that. But again, that's all phase two stuff, right? What we're focused on right now um, is the idea that we want to be able to publish the skill as it is in its current state and get people like you beta testing it so that we can make it available to uh, to like let real people talk to this and see how it all works. I expect that it's going to fall apart pretty easily once we do that. Uh, Katal asks, who is the real Alexa? Is her voice synthetic or actually from a real woman? So my understanding is the very initial Alexa voice that was created was based on a recording. Uh, I don't think that they've revealed the identity of that person because I don't I don't know who it is. Um, but since then, we've gotten very good at synthesizing voices. And so specifically with that one, because we had so many utterances from whoever the voice actor was, that... Um, we were capable of synthesizing that same voice. And so now today, I think what you hear when you talk to an Alexa device is in fact synthesized, but originally the original voice that was used when the Echoes first were released five, five and a half years ago, um, that, that was recorded snippets, uh, phonemes of words that were basically stitched together dynamically. So that is that. So what I would like to do is take a quick run through our skill um, because I think for the most part uh, I got a little I got a little early start on the stream and I apologize for that but I kind of went through and fixed a couple of bugs that were there um, and I don't I don't know that I have more like bugs that are outstanding are there things I could fix like stacking all of these in one individual promise 
yes, of course, that there are things that I can do. And we can, we can spend some time thinking about those too. But as I look at my issue list, I need to add contextual help. This is something that I can do after beta testing has started. We talked about having some snarky responses for clever answers. Uh, I have a place to add snarky responses. Um, and uh, add all the APLs. I don't think we're done with APL, but we have the core APL that I really wanted, which was an intro screen and then showing the question and showing the answer. That's all working. Um, we also have it so that if you're on one of these new Echo Show 10s and you uh, get a question wrong, it shakes its head at you, which is also pretty cool. There's a bunch of other achievements that we can add, but I think a lot of those will come uh, as we continue to beta test and see what people are asking for. And, uh, you know, things like a leaderboard and a website, those are all things that can come. So I, I feel like for the most part, we're, we're pretty good. And I, this one bug that I have left here, I've taken Brian out entirely. I'm going to leave this in the issue list. Um, but if we come into my response interceptor, you can see that I've commented everything out that we have there and we're just going to leave it. So I'm going to restart my service. And what I'd like to do is just kind of take a quick jam through. We'll, at, we'll answer a couple of questions and get a feel for uh, that, the fact that everything's working. So let's, uh, let's do a, a nature question. I just added 50 new nature questions. So I'm excited about this. This nature question should be challenging. And this is actually one of the old ones. The word vulpine is a descriptor that refers to what animals? Does anybody know the answer to that one? Vulpine, without looking it up, without Googling it. Um, OPSEC me. When Alexa doesn't have the best connection, she gets stuck and repeats her prompts. It's funny. Um, it, is, uh, it is pretty funny. Okay. What is your answer? Katal nailed it. Foxes. It's not even female foxes. Uh, vulpine is a term to refer to all foxes. Um, but that is correct. Foxes. That's actually, Cheers! That's actually where the name... You got that one right. The answer was foxes. What should we do next? You can say give me a random question or start today's game. Vulpus is Latin for fox, correct. But not everybody knows that. Um, and so that's the kind of fun thing that um, shows up in a lot of my trivia questions are... Um, Things that people should know, but a lot of people don't. Uh, so that's foxes. Let's do another nature question, see what we get. Because I haven't tested a lot of these questions yet. It's interesting to hear them. From the nature category. A Jenny is a female of what animal species? Does anyone know this one? There is an animal, and the female version of this is referred to as a Jenny. Okay, what is your answer? Kangaroo is a decent guess, Katal, um, but it is in fact a donkey. Kaching! You got that one right. The answer was donkey. What should we do next? Griller you can say, there. give me a random question nice, or nice, start nice. today's game. You said game. mule. Should I add that? Should I add that as a, sy a synonym? I thought about that as I was putting that question together. Let's find it. Donkey. Not that one. Donkey's apparently the answer to a couple of my questions. Donkey Kong. Jenny. So I'll add mule as a potential answer. Um, for that one. Thank you for the synonym, Griller Geek. I think, um, what is a female donkey called? Jenny. Female donkey. A molly is a term for a female mule. Interesting. So it's so mule is not actually a correct answer. Good morning, Alex. A mule is a result of breeding a male donkey and a female horse. So I'm going to leave mule out of my synonyms because it sounds like a molly is a, um, a female mule. So we'll just leave that as is. That's good. That's one of those things where you think you're right or you think you have an accurate answer, but in fact, you do not. Another nature question. Let's do it. I'm feeling good about this, though. 
We'll do this nature question should be challenging. Does anyone know this one? The Millennium Star, the Centenary, the Red Cross, and the Incomparable are some of the largest examples of what in the world? Now, it's no fair if you guys go out and Google this stuff. You're supposed to just talk to Alexa and answer. So if you want to type your answer in, that's great, but don't go searching for this stuff. That ruins all the fun. What do you think the answer is? What do you guys think the answer is? Anyone have a guess? Symbols. Katal goes with symbols. Anyone else have a guess? Griller Geek. Select. Alex. Any of the other folks there in the audience? Maybe mom? That seems like something my mom might know. All right, we're going to move on. The answer to this one, I'll type in symbols because that's what uh, that's what Katal answered. Symbols. It's not going to be right, but we'll put it in there. Whoops-a-daisy. I heard you say symbols, but that is not the correct answer. Diamonds was the correct answer. What should we do this time? Diamonds. Those are all different diamonds. Those are the some of the largest diamonds in the world, and that's the nicknames that they've been given. Uh, all right, those are diamonds. So now let's go start a game. And uh, we'll start this game. We'll play the 10 questions quickly uh, just to make sure we can get through the whole process. And then we're going to go This add is a, a challenging 10 question data quiz data. that will give you one question from 10 of our different categories. For your first question from the film category, which James Bond film has a title that is also the Bond family motto? The pink star is the largest cut diamond you learned last week. Man, awesome. I'm all about the learning. I like for this this skill and these questions to, to teach you something at the same time. Uh, I don't remember the answer. What is your one. answer? Does anyone know this? The, the Bond family motto? It's one of the film names. Uh, it's got to be like Tomorrow Never Dies or Never say, I don't think Never Say Never is a Bond movie. What would the title of this be? I don't actually remember this one. I'm, uh, I'm guessing it's not uh, Golden Eye. That's probably not the family motto. Let's go with um, Tomorrow Never Dies. What we get. Blarg. Tomorrow Never Dies is not correct. The answer was The World is Not Enough. The World is Not Enough. That was it. You just unlocked an achievement. That was your 25th question. 25th. Question number two. Here's one from the history category. And Frank hid from the Nazis in what European city? So, Tull says Amsterdam. That is correct. Yowza! You got that one right. The answer to that question was Amsterdam. For your third question, this is a fun miscellaneous question for you. How many stars are on the flag of China? Does anyone know this? I, uh, I think I know. I think it's five. I think there's, there's one big one and four small ones. That sound right? What is your answer? It's five. Okay, I, that's what I was thinking. Is it five? I, I, you, you could have convinced me it was six, but it, I think it's five too. Alex says it's five. The answer is right. Oh, five. you got that one right. Five was the correct answer. There is one large star and four small stars on the Chinese flag. Sweet, I got Question it right. Question number four. I picked a tricky food and drink question this time. Jack Daniels is distilled in what state? 
Well, this is pretty easy. It's right next door. Kentucky. Actually, let's get this one wrong. Um, no, Jack Daniels is Kentucky. Um, most big name American whiskeys um, are in fact from Kentucky in the United States. What do you think the answer is? Or maybe this one is Tennessee, though. I could be wrong. I am wrong. It's Tennessee. Good job. Yay! You got that one right. The answer was Tennessee. Question number five. I picked a Tennessee tricky Disney. literature question this time. What English author wrote the collection of stories called The Jungle Book? Who knows this one? The English author who wrote the collection of stories called The Jungle Book. Roald Dahl, Katal says. Here we go. Hawk 2000 said Kipling. Darn. I heard you say Roald Dahl, but that is not the correct answer. Rudyard Kipling was Rudyard correct, Rudyard Kipling was the correct answer. For your sixth question, this is a fun language question for you. The word defenestration relates to throwing something. Is it throwing a spear, throwing a party, or throwing something through a window? What do you guys think about this one? A friend of mine wrote an entire essay in college on this topic. Catal dropping What is the your Latin. answer? It is. It's the throwing something through a window. Window, and uh, you can also self-defenestrate, which is to throw oneself through a window. Uh, it is, in fact, window. Window should work as an answer here. I hope it does. I hope I set my synonyms up right. Yeah. Boom! You got oh, that Chris one right. Good morning. The answer was throwing a person or object through a window. Question number seven. I picked a tricky tradition and beliefs question this time. What Mormon leader fathered 57 children with 16 of his 27 wives? Anyone know this? Uh, this is the leader of the, oh, it's, it's the one the university is named after, Brigham Young. Okay. Well done. You got that one right. The answer to that question was Brigham Young. For your eighth question, from the United States category. What state got its nickname because it has trees that drop a nut that looks like the eye of a male deer? So, Griller Geek, John Smith's a good guess. I mean, that's a it's a good Mormon guess. Um, Brigham Young on that one. I'll give you guys a little more time. It looks like we're slightly delayed on our answers. Anyone know this one? Okay. What is your answer? Griller Geek knows. It's Ohio. Um, Zella says, what happened to the Echo Show 10 optimizations? Um, I don't know what you mean. Like, it, it still does hip, the hip, thing. Hooray! You got that one right. If we were on the the device, answer was Ohio. But I haven't... Uh, Ohio is the Buckeye State. I don't know state. what you mean by what happened. Question they're, they're number nine. I picked a tricky technology question this time. This is cheating to play at your computer. Which one. letter is the farthest to the right on a standard keyboard? Oh, we got it solved. It works now. The Zella, the problem we were having... I'm going to open my window. It's getting super hot in here. Um, the problem that we were having was I was having the device move. And because the device okay. was moving, what is your answer? it wouldn't do the choreography also. So by telling it not to move... Um, Katol, that's a really good question. On a, should I say a standard QWERTY keyboard? Let's, um... Standard keyboard.
Because if it's like Dvorak or something else, you're right. So U.S. Dvorak International Standard. Should I just say standard? What if I say free? Is that, is that sufficient for phrasing that question? I think if I just say a standard QWERTY keyboard, is that enough to indicate to people what kind of keyboard I mean? Standard plain US keyboard, that would be QWERTY. That's the first six letters on the top row. QWERTY's okay? Okay, we'll, uh, we'll live with that. Have you seen the custom command I made? Oh, no, but that's super cool. Um, I, you guys can't see this. That's pretty awesome. Oh, wow. So you just added a three second timeout? Well, not exactly, right? You're, you created a function. No, you've just created this in Q name play choreo. Interesting. I'm gonna have to play with this. That's, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's uh, let's finish up our game. The answer to this one is the letter P. So I'm going to say um, Q, just to say something else. Uh oh, Q is not the correct answer. P was the correct answer. Question number ten. I hope you like this one about art and stage. <laughs> What is the name of Spider-Man's alter ego? Good morning, Joel. Uh, Joel Farvel is joining us on, uh, on LinkedIn, so thank you for being here, Joel. Uh, I'm assuming everyone knows this one. Now, this is, this is also not a great question, though. Okay. What is your answer? This is not a great question anymore. Uh, I wonder what Google says to the answer. If I just take... I can't copy that. Uh, let's try this. What is Spider-Man's alter ego? So it says Peter Parker, but there's also Miles Morales, right? Developers, 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 developers. Good morning, Zach, man. Um, I mean, Peter Parker certainly feels like the right answer, but wouldn't Miles Morales also be an acceptable answer? What do you guys think about that? I'm not I'm not sure how to handle this one. If we go to Incarnations of Spider-Man, there's Peter Parker, there's Miles Morales. I think Peter Parker is universally accepted as kind of the answer to this question. What do we see from Miles Morales? I don't know. I think Miles Morales is the Spider Verse one. That's right, Chris. I, I so if I add aliases, that's fine. I can do that. I I probably should do that. Um, but what I'm going to have to do is also change how my answer is phrased. Um. So in here, I'll put Miles Morales. And then I think for the actual answer, Peter Parker or Miles Morales. And here I can, so you can say either of them. Um, and then let, we're gonna have to have some kind of explanation. Chris, you and I need to talk, man. Um, you're missing out watch, not watching these Marvel movies. They're so good. Uh, really is a fun story. Uh, all right, so for this, I'm going to have to say something like, for most of Spider-Man's 
history, Peter Parker was his alter ego. Recently, Miles Morales has been the Wow, you actually walked out and didn't go see the movie? I did not know that. So you're like, you're making a personal choice to avoid them. Uh, select the gang. The LinkedIn live stream is uh, just on my profile. So you can go, f in my profile is the same name everywhere. You can uh, you can find it on LinkedIn there. Recently, Miles Morales has been the... Um, modern alter... Go in both the comics and in films like into the spider verse. Uh, so I guess that'll be fine. So we're gonna say Peter Parker or Miles Morales. I like the question, and you can answer either of them. But I, man, I'm I'm gonna try that one again. Give me question 22. So let's let's finish the game. We're gonna say Peter Parker. That was the answer at the time that the question was asked. Bam! You got that one right. The answer to that question was Peter Parker. You did pretty well that time. Seven correct answers is not the worst I've seen, and I've seen plenty. What would you like to do now? All right, so that, that got us through our entire game bug-free. That's pretty exciting. Give me number 22. And that Peter Parker question again. I picked a tricky art and stage question this time. Uh... What is the name of Spider-Man's alter ego? We're going to say Miles Morales. Now, it'll tell me I'm right, but I just want to hear that whole answer kind of laid out. Hip, hip, hooray! You got that one right. The answer was Peter Parker or Miles Morales. For most of Spider-Man's history, Peter Parker was his alter ego. Recently, Miles Morales has been the modern alter ego in both the comics and in films like Into the Spider-Verse. What should we do this time? Okay, that sounds good, except she's not saying Morales right. Morales. How do we get her to say that properly? I wonder if I could just change it phonetically. Um, yeah, see, and here's here's where we get burned. Here's where we get burned. Because now I can change this. I can't change it here. So I need this to be like the accented -y. I never remember how to do that. Let's try and get the accent of E. Take that in here and see if she'll say it properly if I put the right E in there. Okay, let's let's try that question again. Give me number 22. From the art and stage category. <laughs> Booyah! You got that one right. The answer was Peter Parker or Miles Morales. For most of Spider-Man's history, Peter Parker was his alter ego. Recently, Miles Morales has been the modern alter ego in both the comics and in films like Into the Spider-Verse. What would you like to do now? I don't like the word both there. Both can go away. In the comics and in films like Into the Spider-Verse. Okay, so we're going to have to add a new column. This makes me so angry. 
duplicate field, duplicate cells, screen answer, if that, if that pronunciation even actually fixes it. Um, give me number 22. And then we're going to have to go fix our answer. I hope you like this one about art and stage. <laughs> Booyah! You got that one right. The answer to that question was Peter Parker or Miles Morales. For <laughs> most of Spider-Man's history, Peter Parker was his alter ego. Recently, Miles Morales has been the modern alter ego in the comics and in films like Into the Spider-Verse. Why don't you just say it right? Achievement unlocked. That was your 25th correct answer in TKO Trivia. What should we do next? There's got to be a way to make this happen. Why won't she pronounce it right? So let's go to our, let's go to our voice and sound, voice and tone tool. Miles Morales. It's definitely not what I want. Uh, let's do. This is an actual. Did I write this blog post? Did wow okay, that's great that I uh, don't remember this. I mean, I remember writing it, I guess, but that was like three years ago. Um, phony. So we're gonna want something like this together here. So. Here, this is going to be Miles Morales. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we're going to use the IPA alphabet to get our sounds. So the first sound is M is in mouse. So that's just going to be M. More, 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 more. We're going to sound this whole thing out. Let's go to our vowels. Or I want the O. Mouth, no. Go, more. Goo, foot. I think it's goat. Mo goat, more. I think it's going to be, am I using the right one? IPA, yeah. So we're going to take this. Here. Uh, next is the R. That should probably red. It's an upside down R. Okay. Like trap. You guys haven't done this, by the way. This is super fun. I love doing this. Morale, la 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 la. Morales, la, like lay. It's just an L. And S, morale, S. Morale, uh, 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 uh. not a. Uh. Uh, 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 address and need an S on the end. And I think it probably is just S. Seam ship. Is there an S at the end of anything? No. Okay. So Morales. So let's see if my phonetic sounding version sounds any better. Morales. 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 Sounds pretty good. Morales. Yeah, that sounds pretty good, right? So then what we can do is just take this thing or data for our voice answer, and we just wrap its last name in this phoneme tag. 
like so. And that still leaves our screen answer alone and everything else here is good. So this this is where we have to fix one thing. It's Yeah, it's not perfect, I agree, but it's much better than it was. And so if we come back to our tool and we say, whatever we were saying, give me number 22 or whatever. Give me number 22. This is a fun art and stage question for you. Otto Oct. What is the name of Spider-Man's alter ego? Otto Octavius, which is technically true, but not for what we're looking for. Oh dear. That answer is not correct. The answer was Peter Parker or Miles Morales. For most of Spider-Man's history, Peter Parker was his alter ego. Recently, Miles Morales has been the modern alter yeah, ego in, in the there, comics so and in films like Into the Spider-Verse. You can say something like, give me a science question, okay. or you can start today's game. So we'll take this what same will it be? sound on our description. And we're good. So the last thing we need to do is change our code so that when we show the answer on the screen, we show the screen answer and not the voice answer. And that, that should be pretty easy. So that's in our answer intent. And this, let's see, answer. I think we just need to get a new value, which is going to be, I have answer. But that's, where do we do the APL? Answer text, we're pulling the voice answer, so I think I can just say this. Screen answer. I think that might be the only change that we need to make. Yeah, it looks like I started down this path with this line, which I'm not using. Okay, let's try that question one more time and see if everything is pronounced properly now. Give me number 22. I hope you like this one about art and stage. Mary Jane, maybe that's the answer. Blast. I heard you say Mary Jane, but that is not the correct answer. Peter Parker or Miles Morales was the correct answer. For most of Spider-Man's history, Peter Parker was his alter ego. Recently, Miles Morales has been the modern alter ego in the comics here. and in films like Into the Spider-Verse. What should we do next? Do I put it at the beginning or at the end? There we go. It goes before the syllable. So I think we can try one more thing here. Uh, Peter Parker or Miles More More. Alex. Morales. Let's take that here. See if that gives me the sound that I'm looking for. Now we have a different emphasis. Morales. 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 That's much better. Okay. So one more time on the questions. Give me number 22. Obviously, this intent will not exist when we go to production. But it exists for now because it makes my life easy for testing. Otherwise, everything's randomized. I picked a tricky art and stage question this time. Wowza! You got that one right. The answer to that question was Peter Parker or Miles Morales. For most of Spider-Man's history, Peter Parker was his alter ego. Recently, Miles Morales has been the modern alter ego in the comics and in films like Into the Spider-Verse. What should we do next? I wish there was a better way to get, like, just get that cleaner. What would be super cool 
would be to have the ability to say something to the device and have it spell out the phonetics. God, that would be awesome. Oh, or at least a tool that would do it or something. Because obviously Alexa doesn't give you that, but it would be pretty awesome. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good about this skill. We got through an entire game. We can list the categories. This should list all 20 of them, right? I have 20 fun categories to choose from. This was the other APL. You can we pick in. from United States, technology, geography. Here's some things you can try saying. Give me a random question. Start a new game. What are the categories? Get the subscription. What would you like to do? All right. I feel like I feel like we're pretty good. So if I click on this distribution, this is going to get me to a point where today, today, I think we can share this with all of you if you guys want to play this and, and beta test a little bit. Um, game that's better than your. Trivia game that's better than you. <laughs> that's not what I'm going to stick with, but we'll leave it for now. Um, TTO Trivia is a challenging trivia game where the questions are difficult and the prizes no, and the don't matter. Example phrases, we're going to have Alexa open TK Trivia. Give me a science question. Something else, something like uh, start a game. Need skill icons for this. I think I already have these somewhere. I bring these down here already. Media icons. Yeah, there they are right there. Cool. So small icon. Can I can I drag onto this? I don't even know if I can do that. Drag and drop, yeah. Boom. It's always risky because if it if the page isn't enabled to do that and you try to um you try to drag something on the page, it just loot you just lose the page you're on. Definitely games and trivia. We'll do trivia. Jeopardy. Is. Game. Um, quiz show. I have this set up there. Yeah, privacy policy, perfect. It's a very generic privacy policy for pretty much everything that I do. Uh, I don't keep your data. I don't do any of that stuff. Terms of your use. Also have a terms of use, do I? So, um, I don't think I need a terms of use yet. So we'll just save and continue. Does this skill allow people to make purchases? Yes. Does it collect personal information? No. Um, does it target children under the age of 13? No. Does it contain advertising? No. Um, these will be my instructions. Beta test. Uh, let's do okay. administrator email address. Um, we'll have to get your email addresses in here. There's a way for me to like send a link or something though. So we'll do like 
add one. And we can enable beta testing. I think as long as it passes all the tests that are required here. All right, so now if I, I'm, I'm curious because I don't actually know the answer to this question. Save. Uh, run those tests again. I'm curious to know, for those of you here on the Twitch, uh, can you get... Does this give you permission to join the beta? I, I don't know if I can just give you the link like that or not, or if I have to get your email address. It would be way easier if I could just give you that link. Let me know if you can get in there. And if you can, great. Play around. Use it. Let me know what you think. Uh, we have an issues list. This issues list is where I would like you to log any issues that you find. Don't be shy. You're not going to hurt my feelings. But I am curious to know if you guys can actually get there. Oh, the other thing that I'm going to have to do, I just realized this. I don't have, I, I've had an issue deploying it to Lambda. So I'm going to have, so don't really, like you can, you can join the beta test right now if you want to try it right now. It's called Jeff's Trivia Game. Don't forget that part. Um, it won't be eventually, but it is for right now. And uh, it's running locally off my machine. So we're still, we're still using local debugging here. So I can go in and see like somebody's using it right now. Um, so it's cool that you guys are using it, but be prepared. It's going to stop working because if I stop this service from running, then, uh, it will, it will stop running and I can't have this running all the time. So I have to figure out the, what is wrong with the, um, deployment. That's interesting. I thought I saw it running. There is no one in there yet. Cause you would have a, you would have an entry in this database. Check discord. Going on on Discord. I'm on the Discord. I don't see anything. Yeah, your Amazon account doesn't have access. That's kind of what I was expecting. So you guys can't get in unless I have your email address. So what I'll recommend is if you want to jump in the Discord and send me your email address or uh, DM me here on Twitch or whatever, I will have to get you guys added over time. But that gives me some time too, because I want to make sure that um, I have this running on Lambda, like in real production versus off of my local machine here. And I, I have one issue that I haven't really dug into yet, but this is, this is the error. So when I call the skill, I get this error over and over and I don't really know what it is. And I haven't, I haven't spent any time on it yet. So I, I don't want to take anything away from what the error is giving me, but it says there's this unexpected token period here, but I, I don't know specifically what it's referring to. So I need to dive in and do a little figuring out to figure out what could be going wrong. Anyway, um, this is pretty cool. We're, we're well on our way to publishing an entire game that was built here on stream. So team view, I I've got your, uh, I see your email address in the chat. Um, DM it to me so that I, it persists so I can hold on to it. Uh, I'm not going to add anybody right now though, um, because I'm going to have to stop the service here in just a minute. Anyway, uh, I have, um, I'm going to actually be in a clubhouse room today at noon talking about internet of things and devices and stuff like that. So, um, I still have to get some lunch also. So I think the, the other thing that I wanted to look at, we had an APL ninja here somewhere. Excellent. Maybe we'll try and hack our way through this real quick. There was, I thought, an excellent list on APL Ninja of uh, like a grid list. Yeah, there it is. Grid layout. That happens to be exactly what I need, but I have to figure out how to get all the content into it.
So open an editor. Right now, inside each box, he has the actual text here. So what I would want to do instead is an image. And instead of text and color, I have to remember what this is. Um, I can't remember any of these properties. We come down here into multimodal responses, visual. Just image source. It doesn't have to be an Alexa image, right? It could just be an image. As I look at this, we have and then I just need to figure out what that property should be. So I think it's image source. I just if I just drag an image in here, it's just source. Okay. So in this one, we're going to change this to source, and we're going to give it a URL. And the URL of this image is going to be the icon, which is in S3. That's what I wanted. We'll do this in a more dynamic way, but for now, I just want to hard code it in and see what it looks like. TKO, art, icons, art and stage. Okay. Look at that. How nice does that look? Okay, and then we could take this. We could take our text object that we had here. We'll drop it underneath that. Um, Cobra, that's a good question. Hold on, let me, um, let me grab my phone. Those are answers I should know the answer to. Uh, it's called, what's your IOT origin story? That will be the name of the room. Uh, all right, so then this text here is gonna be art and stage. make this like 80%. Cool. And this is like 20%. Close. How about 75%? 25%? Change that font size down a little bit too. How to do any of that, but what if I just get rid of the style? Closer. Closer, closer. Well, how do I change a font size in APL? These are all things I should know. Text, just drop one of you right there. Font size. Sure. That looks pretty good.
we would want to do this for each individual cell. This can almost be hard coded. There's not a lot to dynamic about this. I wonder if I could just do that. If I just took these chunks, I could just roll into this one and do this. Boom. And this one's going to be. I don't know what the next category is. Business world. That doesn't look as good. Interesting. I may have to rework my graphics here a little bit. Something like this, but I guess I guess I have to have that space in there. I wonder if I could do aren't there margins on these things? Um, I think there's a margin property if I go to the GUI. I think about my image. If I could just bump down the margin like a little bit on each each side would be fine with height padding. No. No. I don't want to add space to the component. I want to. Well, yeah, maybe I do. Maybe I want padding on the container outside of it. So what if I did? That. Nothing. Because should not have that property. Cool. Okay. What else can I do to move that stuff in? The padding, and I could say height is 80%. So, all oh right, the first example phrase, yeah, because I haven't changed my invocation name yet. Um, I'm not seeing any margins of any kind, which would be super handy. So that probably means that I need to wrap it in something like this. Frame probably has a margin. I just saw it. Padding left. Width. There's no margin on this either. Interesting. I could have sworn there was a margin property. Width, height, padding, shadow, spacing. Alex would absolutely know how to do this in two seconds. I, I do not know how. Let's change that back to 100. What does my container have as options? If I look at container, direction, justify content. Grow, shrink, align, position, description. Oh, because I can't just do padding. Cool. Padding top.
If I just add this to each container, those look aligned, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the dimensions of these graphics are going to be different, I think. So if I come to my category, we'll just use this as my reference. Design is next. And so if we took this to this, design. Design. Okay, let's keep going. Next up, film. Stop saving. Food. A film, Jeff. That's what you said. Next one on the brain already. This one here. The. Okay, so we have we have this. This is coming together nicely. We'll get to see all of our icons on the screen together. And uh, then we'll, I don't know, then we'll be able to, I don't know what the next one is. Geography. One is history. Together. It's coming together. Next. Language and then literature. Miscellaneous and music. Be nice to go. This is actually the first time I'm actually even seeing these icons together. Dick. Okay, uh, next up is something, teacher and people. Was politics and then science, politics, Um, yeah, it's definitely all coming together. Uh, looks nice. Sports and games and technology.
points and games. Got what it was, sports and games, technology, and then tradition and beliefs. Uh, sports and games. Technology. Tradition. Beliefs. Okay, and then after that one. Tradition and beliefs. TV and radio. And United States. Finally. I miss one. Oh my goodness. That looks quite nice. And then if we can just take this whole row off. Quite lovely. Now I would love for that to be vertically centered and I'll worry about that later, but we have, we have them on the screen. The next thing will be to rig them all up to send user events so that people could tap on them instead of, um, instead of saying the thing, but I think this is good for now. So we can take this APL document as is categories and we're going to come into our APL folder. We're going to create a new one called category list. It's on. We have this, all of this. Yep. And then in our handler, which is category hand, category list in category full list. I should do it in both. Category list intent. Um, when we do this, I think all we, if we think, let's find a place where we do APL. Make sure I have this right in my head. We have this directive. We have to create the directive. And the APL document is just a part of it. So this is what we need. Category list intent, right? Here-ish. We don't need just that. We also need the if supports APL. If we support APL, then we want to do interesting stuff, which is going to be getting our APL document. This is going to be category list. So we'll call it category list. And then we're going to create a directive. And we're going to add that to our response. Look like this. There's no data for this one. So we should see that list now on our screen. If the device supports APL, that's worth a test. Whoa, whoa, whoa. WebSocket closed. What? Okay. Let's try it on the device. Alexa. Open Jeff's trivia game. Welcome to TKO Trivia, the trivia game show where you answer difficult questions and win nothing. 
What would you like to do now? You can start today's game or ask for a trivia question. What are the categories? Here are five categories I think you might like. Business world, nice. geography, miscellaneous, politics, or tradition and beliefs. Which category would you like to try? It feels like I should keep the swirly behind it, right? I got more work to do I'm on this. I'm not sure what to do. You said WLS like I should keep the swirly behind it, and that's not something I expected. What should we do this time? Give me a nature question. Alexa, give me a nature question. From the nature category. What gas in the blood of divers can cause the bends? All right, the answer to that is nitrogen. Alexa, nitrogen. Alexa. Alexa. Sorry. Nitrogen. From the nature category. What are we doing? What gas in the blood of divers Alexa. can cause the bend? Nitrogen. Well done. You got that one right. The answer to that question was nitrogen. What should we do next? You can say, give me a random question or start today's game. Give me a random question. Here's one from the music category. In the John Mellencamp song, where do Jack and Diane suck on chili dogs? Does anyone know the answer to that one? In the song, where do Jack and Diane suck on chili dogs? What do you think the answer is? Outside the tasty freeze. Booyah. You got that one right. The answer was outside the tasty Screech freeze. Screech out, you were close. What should we do next? It's outside the Tasty Freeze. Behind the Tasty Freeze, we see the answer in the log. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess you guys can't see the log. Say, it's outside the Tasty Fries, behind the Tasty Freeze. But I'm not sure what you want me to do. What should we do next? Stop. Why are you That's following me? Those are Rhodes. Welcome to uh, oh, oh, Oz Rhodes. We're going to go with Oz Rhodes. That seems better. Oz Rhodes, thank you for the follow. Welcome. We're uh, we're putting the final touches on an Alexa trivia game. And uh, we were just testing a few questions and making sure stuff worked on our device. It's looking good. It's looking good. Okay, so I want to add a couple of issues for myself just to remind me what I need to work on in my free time. One is add the swirly category APL. That's and then oh did stream for charities just pump something in there. Uh stream for charities I think it needs to be the entire YouTube URL. Not just the not just the like ID. Although it does say YouTube ID, doesn't it? I wonder why it didn't come through. That's interesting. Woo! Oh, we just already played it. Can I can I see the old? We'll get you a little Ric Flair. If you want some Ric Flair, we'll do it. Oh yeah, we're we're gonna get you that right now. Later today, Ric Flair will be going, as many people say. For I don't know which, what I'm doing here. Well, 
We'll, uh, we'll get you a little sound effect here. That'll be your new walk-on music stream for charities. When you show up, Ric Flair will announce it. We'll make it happen. MP3 audio download. I want to see this in my folder. Call this Ric Flair uh, so that I remember what woo means. Hit our folder. Ric Flair sound. So now in here in the chat bot, we're going to go add Ric Flair. We're going to go pick our file, which is going to be here. Woo! There it is. Automatically generate a command for that so people can use it if they want to. And we'll say, Woo! Ric Flair. Okay. And then the last. The last thing is events. We'll come into this and we'll say stream for charities found ya. Uh, we'll pick our audio file again. Woo! So good. And submit. All right, so now the next message that you post and the first time from each stream, um, it'll automatically make that noise for you, Stream for Charity. So you're all set. Woo! There it is. Awesome. Nice work. So it only happens once. So it happens the first time that you show up uh, and say something. And uh, then it'll happen again tomorrow and the next time. So now I'll start to associate that Ric Flair sound with when you show up and say hi. Very cool. Okay. Um, add a swirly to the category APL. Uh, let's do it. We also need to vertically center this on the screen. Maybe, yeah, maybe. With that. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to check and see if, um, what it looks like on little screens. Alexa, open Jeff's trivia game. This is TKO Trivia. If you thought Jeopardy was challenging, you're in for a treat. You can say something like, give me a science question, or you can start today's game. What will it be? What are the categories? Here are five of my favorite categories. Film, Still language, nice. nature, can you guys see sports, that? It's kind of small. and games, and United States. Which category do you want? It still fits. It still looks nice. Alexa, quit. I'm not sure what to do. Oh. You said it still looks nice. Alexa, quit. And Alexa. that's not something I expect. Quit. Quit. I'm not sure what to do. You said it still Alexa. looks nice. Alexa, quit. Alexa. And that's not something I... Quit. I'm not sure what to do. You said it still looks nice. You Alexa, quit. And that's not something I expected. You can say something like, Alexa, give me a science quest. Exit. Thank you. Oh, and now we reboot. I, I did something good there. All right. Well, like I said, I am going to be over on um, Clubhouse right at noon. We're going to be talking about IoT. The, the room is called, What's Your IoT Origin Story? So keep an eye out for that if you guys are on um, Clubhouse. It would be super cool to see you over there. And uh, otherwise, uh, I'll be back here again tomorrow morning. We're going to hopefully finish this thing up. I've got to figure out how to get it deployed and make sure that my um, my Lambda is working functionally so that I can get you guys all into a beta test. So Stream for Charities, you weren't here earlier, I think. Um, but we're going to try and get, make this available for all of you to start playing via beta starting tomorrow. So if you'd like to be able to play this game, um, make sure you stop back tomorrow and I'll be signing people up. I, you have to give me your email address, but I won't spam you, I promise. Uh, I'll just add you to the beta list and then um, you can use the beta from there on up. I think beta runs for 90 days. Uh, I probably will submit within a few weeks, but at least that'll give me a couple of weeks of you guys using it and playing with it and breaking it to figure out what's wrong and what's what's not working. Uh, all right, so with that, it is time for us to bid adieu, to say goodbye. And we're going to go over to Lana Lux today, see how she's coming along on her game.
So we are ready to go. We've got the whole gang loaded up. Thank you guys all so much. Go say hi to Lana. Check out the cool stuff she's doing. And I will see you guys all bright and early tomorrow morning.